bless you out there. We are taking advantage of these moments that the Lord allow us to give us. But the kind of knowledge that is coming across the tube at you, you ought to thank God for it because it is coming right out of your Bible and it's coming clear and it is coming uninterrupted. The only way it can be interrupted is that you yourself interrupt it. All right? And I hope that you don't. Because we've talked about the woman that had the issue of blood. She heard of Jesus. And here we see blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus. They told him it was Jesus of Nazareth that passed by. Now, mind you, that's, that's what they said. It's Jesus of Nazareth that passed by. Understand this clear. They told him, Jesus, one, of, two, Nazareth, three, pass, four, by, five, five words. But look what he says. Jesus, one, thou, two, son, three, of, uh, David, have mercy on me. You notice the difference in that statement? They told him Jesus of Nazareth. He said, wait, son of David. Notice that? See? That's why Jesus said, you take heed how you hear. Not only what you hear, but how you hear. They didn't tell him this was Jesus, the son of David. But they told him it was Jesus of Nazareth. So apparently, the man, though he may be blind, he heard about who? Jesus of Nazareth. They didn't tell him Jesus of Nazareth, uh, the son of David, passed by. They told him Jesus of Nazareth. So apparently, he had heard the whole statement. Jesus of Nazareth is the son of David. Uh, apparently, he was blind, but he could hear. Don't be like diabetes. Jesus said, having two eyes. And into the hell fire. And uh, have mercy on me. They must. He had to find out that Jesus is merciful. You don't know how much knowledge he heard being blind, but you know he heard, he heard a lot. And uh, verse thirty-nine. They which went before. They rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, I don't care about y'all out there. Have mercy on me. I'm the one that needed it. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up and be quiet. No, I'm going to be quiet. I know who he is. I've heard of what he can do. I have a need. See, y'all need me to be quiet. I need to see. All right? Y'all need me to be quiet, but I need to see. All right? So y'all ain't going to stop me. My need is greater than y'all's need. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet. No. 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 Jesus, shut up. But, uh, Get the hell out of my mouth. No, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, here was a persistent blind man, wasn't he? A blind man that was absolutely persistent. So much so until the Bible said in verse 40 here. And Jesus stood, stopped him in his track. When you have that kind of persistence that you can stop Jesus in his track, he don't have to tell you, I never knew you. Because your persistence caused him to stop in his track. The Bible said Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought to him. Think about that statement. I'm reading 
I'm reading from the Word of God. I'm reading out of the, out of, I, I'm reading the incident as it occurred there in Jericho. All right? I don't mean to harm, but this incident has more significant than the footprint of Neil Armstrong on the moon. <laughs> All right? Let's get this thing straight. All right? Oh, praise the Lord. My God, I thank you, Lord. Now, Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought to him. Think about that. Can you understand what Jesus just did? He was so taken and so fortified and so forcefully stopped until he commanded them, uh, bring that man to me. Anybody that is that is persistent about me, I want to know what's on their mind. I want to hear what's stirring their persistence that they call me so forcefully. The Bible says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how can they call upon him whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? Well, hear the preacher himself. And how can he preach except he be sent? Well, he's right now going by Jericho. And here's blind Bartimaeus. Oh, stop, Lord, stop. I heard you. Come on over here. Bring him to me. Can you imagine Jesus telling everybody, hey, y'all be quiet. You're all trying to stop him. Y'all be quiet. Now y'all shut up be quiet and bring him to me. You're trying to stop him? Don't stop him. Bring him to me. He calls him and commanded him to come to him. And when he was come near, Jesus asked him in verse 41, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto thee? Notice that. I mean, anyone with this kind of assistance, you must have a need. Anyone having that kind of assistance enough to stop me in my track and would command me to come to you, you have to have a need. What will thou, not about not the other people that try to stop you, I didn't want you to come to me. It's kind of like the mother's bringing the children, the babies, to Jesus to put his hand in his hand. They're like, no, 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 no. And Jesus said, stop, stop, stop. Stop for the little children to come unto me. Don't forbid them. All right? For of such is the kingdom uh, of God. Uh, what will thou that I shall do? Notice that? He didn't say what? I should do, but what I shall do. Same word that God used over uh, in that accomplishment, it shall accomplish. It shall, remember that statement we just had a moment ago? It shall accomplish. Jesus is standing up now in that I shall accomplish. Spirit. What spirit is he in? He is in that I shall accomplish spirit. In that I shall accomplish mode. And what a great moment to be in with the Lord, isn't it? What wilt thou, you personally, that I shall do unto thee? Ah, oh, my God, my God. We got to come back here shortly, children. God bless you out there across the globe, pastors. Get your Bible and run to this and be fed and filled. This is foodfulness. God bless you.